Aw, oh, snap. Kansas making a game of it. Oh, no. Okay, back to baseball. <laughs> What's up everybody, I'm Tara Wellman and this is Bird Seeds. Yes, for real, no you are not imagining it. <laughs> right, so anyway, it won't be long now before we are watching the Clydesdales make their way around the track at Bush Stadium and the Hall of Famers welcome in the 2017 Cardinals squad, all before breaking their regular season ice against None other than the 2016 world champion Chicago Cubs on Sunday Night Baseball. <laughs> Honestly, I don't want to waste your time trying to summarize spring training games or dig too deeply into stats that don't really matter or roster decisions that have already been made. So instead, let's just jump into some hot topics from the last little stretch of spring training, shall we? First up is Yadier Molina, and can we just start by taking a moment to acknowledge how out of his mind he played during the World Baseball Classic? I mean, that was classic Yadi plus an extra helping of national pride and adrenaline. I mean, we can only hope to see that Yadier Molina on the field for the Cardinals this year, am I right? But that is not the Molina story, at least not anymore, because now there's this little thing called contract negotiations hanging over his head and that of John Mozeliak. So let's recap. Yadier's in a contract year. Mo doesn't like to overspend and tends to wait until the very last minute to finish a deal. Yachty's not getting any younger. Carson Kelly isn't necessarily getting better sitting around a AAA. Molina's legacy in St. Louis is as solid as anyone's in recent history, but baseball is a cruel business that doesn't care about such trivial nonsense. And now there's a deadline and a thinly veiled threat of a free agency pursuit. So what do we, the fans, make of all of this? I mean, Yadi has, in consecutive breaths this week, said that he wants to be a Cardinal for the duration of his career, but that he wants to get paid. And he's not only not afraid of free agency, but that he's intrigued by it. Now, I could be totally off base here, but I think his experience during the World Baseball Classic reignited his drive and his intensity and his belief that he's one of the very best and should be treated as such. And that's great. He acknowledged that playing with some of baseball's best young stars energized him. And that's great too, but the reality that the Cardinals have to consider is not how well he played when the stakes were high and the pressure was on, but how well he'll play for three or four or five more years. If you look at the 2017 salaries for catchers in the game today, Yachty kinda has a point. I mean, last year he consistently ranked near the top of most catching statistics, offensively and defensively, and he was 1-2 with Buster Posey in many of those categories. I mean, CBS Sports ranks him as the third best catcher going into the 2017 season, and if Molina can repeat his 2016 numbers and get back to a bit more normal rate defensively, specifically, with regards to throwing out would-be base dealers, he'll easily be deserving of a contract more similar to the best of the best. But right now, that's a big if. As it stands right now, Yadier Molina has said that he wants a contract done and in the files either now, as in before opening night, or after he gives free agency a try. Now, waiting is a risky move for John Mozeliak. See Albert Pools. But signing an extension before the season starts is also risky. I mean, what if the last three weeks were the peak for Yadier Molina, but the rest is downhill from there? How committed are the Cardinals to Carson Kelly as the future of the catcher position in St. Louis, and how long can they stand to wait before giving him a real opportunity in the big leagues? Does Molina's significance to the organization in ways that can't be quantified statistically play into these contract negotiations? Should they? 
Did Yachty's recent taste of playing for a different team stir up some previously hidden desire to try something new, despite his insistence that he loves the city of St. Louis? And is John Mazalak more committed to keeping Yadier Molina, or keeping his promise, to not ever overspend on a single player? Because, let's be honest, Yadi's going to get paid, whether it's the Cardinals who sign his check or someone else, and we've seen how that whole we'll get him in free agency thing tends to work out. See, Pujols, Hayward, Price. I'll stop there. For now, these are all questions without answers, and apparently, John Mozelex got about a week to figure it out. One thing we do know for sure, though, is that come opening night, Yadier Molina will be catching the newly minted Cardinals ace, Carlos Martinez. Carlos will be making his very first opening day start, instead of Adam Wainwright, in his fifth year at the Major League level. Coincidentally, Adam Wainwright also made his first opening day start in year five of his Major League career. And really, let's be honest, there's no controversy here. We saw Martinez take over the ace role last year on the field, and this appears to be the beginning of the torch passing off the field, too. Although, there are going to be plenty more is he mature enough to be the ace comments, I'm sure. Here's the deal, Wayno just isn't Wayno of old anymore. Believe me, I want him to be that guy as much as anyone, but we watched all of last season as he continued to promise that he had it figured out or he was going to be better next time, only he didn't, and he wasn't. Adam seemed to be on the right track this spring, for most of the spring, discovering he drifted away from some old grips, to feeling good physically, to all the details that we've heard over and over and over again. I mean, I love you, Wayno, I really do, but it's feeling a little boy who cried wolf at the moment. Maybe it's just me, bracing myself for another somewhat disappointing season for the former ace, but I can't convince myself to really expect that much more than a repeat of last season. Is that crazy? Wayno sure thinks so. He, of course, handled the news about Martinez getting the opening night start, just like the pro that he is, and that's no surprise. But he's still claiming that he'll be gunning for that start next season, after they both win 20 games in 2017. Now, this is really the reaction that you'd expect from a guy who still believes he has what it takes to be the ace of the staff, but we watched as Chris Carpenter passed the torch to Adam Wainwright, and I think we're not far from seeing Adam Wainwright give in a little bit and pass that torch to Carlos Martinez. I'd be okay if he proved me wrong. Please, Adam Wainwright. Do just that, but for now, I'm pumped to see Carlos Martinez become the face of the organization, just as it should be. Alright, now it wouldn't be a complete episode of Bird Seeds without a Colton Wong mention, am I right? But don't worry, I'm not here to defend his 190 average this spring. I mean, not really. I just want to point out one tiny little thing. There's been a lot of chatter about Colton Wong and whether or not he's earned the starting job based on this spring, and I, that's all fine and well, but let's be clear about one thing. I mean, he's working, yes, to become the everyday starting second baseman, but to also earn a job as the, the eight-hole hitter. I mean, that's realistically what's going to happen. I'll be curious to see how he attempts to make up ground once the regular season starts, because it has not been pretty. And as much as the organization seems to claim that he's their guy, they're also doing a really good job of setting up backup plans and backups to the backup plans just in case. I mean, I don't know how Colton's head hasn't completely exploded from the pressure yet because I'm pretty sure that mine would have. But enough about Colton. I want to talk about the guy who's playing not for the eighth spot, but for the cleanup spot in the order. I mean, by the numbers, he's actually having a worse spring than everyone's favorite whipping boy. Steven Piscotti's average is hanging out around 175, and he only has a couple of extra base hits all spring. It's not been pretty either, and yet everyone seems to think that he will simply flip a switch come opening night and be just fine. Is that wishful thinking or reasonable expectation based on his past performance? Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there isn't reason to be concerned about Colton Wong, but I'm also just wondering if there's a little bit of reason to be slightly worried about Stephen Piscotty too. 
What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. The good news is we don't have to wait much longer to find out the answer to any of these questions. Opening night, Sunday night baseball, it's all happening, and I can't wait. I'm Tara Wellman, and I'll see you next time on Bird Seeds.